Well, we're joined now by the social housing activist, Kwejo Twenty Boa. Thank you so much for being uh, with us on the programme. We really appreciate it. Um, the case just breaks my heart, uh, this little boy. I'm, I'm sure you must sort of feel the same. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely horrific. And I've been campaigning for the last year and a half to avoid a situation just like this. But what we've seen tragically with the case of Awab is that he's paid the ultimate price for um, corporate neglect um, by his landlord. Are you surprised? No, I can't say I am. I mean, it's an absolute tragic case, but from what I've seen across the country in terms of tenants living under um, social housing landlords, whether that be housing association or local authority, is often they're living in similar cases. In some cases, even worse conditions. For decades, even, I've spoken to one tenant who reached out to me for help after complaining for 27 years. That's longer than I've been alive, yet they weren't listened to. I think that's it, isn't it? The not being listened to. Someone mm -hmm. talking for 27 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the lawyers for Awab's parent read the statement from them. They said, we cannot tell you how many health professionals we've cried in front of. Mm -hmm. And Rochdale Borough housing staff, we'd, we've pleaded to express their concern. We shouted out as loudly as we could. I mean, they're just being ignored. I mean, it's absolutely devastating. His parents complained before he was even born about the damp and mould in his property. Yet, Two years on, it led to, to his death. That never should have been the case. And I'm sure they would have been complaining to the likes of the repairs manager at Rochdale Borough Wide Housing. And they haven't been talked about in this whole conversation. Um, complaints would have gone directly to them. They would have overseen it. And um, we've seen in the last 24 hours that there's others on Arab's estate living in similar conditions. Four years, some people have complained for. This is a systemic issue, not just Rochdale Bor Borough Wide Housing Association, but across the sector. Why do you think people aren't being listened to? Do you think it's because of resources? Do you think it's because of racism, mm. of class? What, what, what do you think it is? I think it's, a, I think it's a mixture. I mean, racism and class does massively mm. come into it, especially from um, my experience. But I also think it's a stigma with social housing tenants. It's a cultural issue within the housing um, sector. And the fact is, landlords can get away with it due to the lack of regulation. I mean, for example, we're often told as civilians, nobody is above the law. And I think in the case of bad landlords, they, they shouldn't be exempt from that um, either, especially in cases like our, where it costs the life of an innocent individual. So, Gareth Swarbrick has been removed from his post mm -hmm. as Chief Executive of Rochdale Borough Wide Housing. That's mm -hmm. the housing association that rented yeah. the house. Michael Gove has written to every council leader in England and mm -hmm. social housing provider. Do you think that change is coming? Well, I have to say in the case of um, uh, Rochdale Borough Wide Housing's Chief Executive having to be fired is an insult and disgrace and I think it represents um, the culture again within within housing and directors boards. The fact that directors boards only 24 hours ago was agreeing that he should stay in his post even after that story comes out is insulting for me. So I can't imagine what it's like um, for the family. Do I think change comes? Change should have come five and a half years ago after Grenfell. We should not be sat here having a conversation about an innocent two-year-old um, dying as a result of the neglect of his landlord. But here we are. Um, change really should have come then. So I really hope it does. I really hope the sector wakes up and does their jobs, realises that it's people's lives they're dealing with. It's not just a nine to five. I think that's what the problem is. What would your message be right now to Michael Gove? You're obviously a very eloquent mm -hmm. spokesperson for mm -hmm. many, many people mm -hmm. right across the country. What, what would your message be to him? Well, I've met, I've, I've spoken to uh, Michael Gove and his team uh, several times and I'm glad the regulation's coming in. It needs to come in a lot quicker. I don't think we're being tough enough with bad landlords. I think um, in cases like this, to avoid cases like this, we honestly need criminal charges now. If it was any other sector, if this was the NHS, for example, and it was a doctor or nurse who had neglected their patient in this way and it resulted to a death, not only would they be struck off, that wouldn't even be disputed, there would also be a criminal investigation open that we need to see it in, within housing too, because it's people's lives they're dealing with, like I said earlier, not just the nine to five. I just want to sort of pause and, and give people a bit of a sense about the conditions that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think we can show a video uh, of the kind so of guys, conditions. So, guys, I've just woke up and it's getting worse, right? Absolute ridiculous. Look at this, right? Do you call this condensation? What the hell is that? Look. That is not condensation. Look at this, look. And it smells, it's rank, it's disgusting. And I'm not putting up with this, right? You expect people to live in conditions like this. Come on. Mm. Right, you see, on the window there's condensation, but the roof shouldn't be looking like that. Come on. Are you kidding me? Look at this. It smells and it's, it's destroying the carpet and the paint. 
find that so shocking. Yeah, I mean, I posted that um, 20, I think 24 hours after um, our story broke a couple of days ago. And I want to bring up this point about damp and mould, because there's this um, huge misunderstanding with it. And often it's tenants blamed for the conditions that they're living mm. in with damp and mould. They're told, stop drying your clothes indoors, open your windows, turn your radiators on. There are 300,000 different types of moulds, a lot of which can grow in your homes. And many of them um, require different ways to tackle it. However, across the sector, it's often the case that landlords send out contractors, like in this case, where it's just washed off with a bit of bleach and they hope that it doesn't come back. Or what they do is they send a contractor around to paint over it and pretend it's not there. That's not how you deal with damp and mould. And now I hope they've learned that with damp and mould, it can cost your life. What kind of conditions do you see? Yeah. Oh. Honestly, the list goes on. I've seen people's homes flooded with sewage, raw sewage. I've seen people's homes filled with cockroaches, damp, mice, mould, um, ceilings that have collapsed. I've taken tenants to A&E um, due to a ceiling pass partially collapsing on top of them. I have seen it all. You, you wouldn't even let animals live in these homes, the homes that I've seen, um, never mind human beings. And I think it's an absolute disgrace that in this country we allow that to happen with the resources that we have. And I mean, with these housing associations, for example, often the chief executives are paid six figure salaries or in terms of surpluses, it's in the hundreds of millions. They don't have an excuse about not having enough money and funding. It's their priorities and lack of care. And talk to me a bit about your story. Now, how did you mm -hmm. come to be sitting here? What, what, how did you come to be involved in campaigning? So I lived in um, poor housing myself, poor social housing, and we had been complaining for our, to our landlord for many, many months, if not years, about the disrepair we were living in. Again, cockroaches, mice, damp, mould, kitchen that was nearly 100 years old, rotting, no bathroom, um, no bathroom light, no windows in the bathroom. And we, my dad became ill. He was diagnosed with stage one esophageal cancer in those, those conditions that progressed. It was an aggressive form of cancer, um, progressed to stage four. He was being fed through his stomach by um, nurses three times a day in those conditions. They struggled to bathe him and still the landlord wouldn't do or fix or remedy the property. He then passed away and things went from bad to worse. We were left over winter without a living room ceiling and still they wouldn't come and deal with the other issues. And I said, enough was enough. And there's no, to social... no, no ceiling on your living room? Yes, yeah, so uh, um, we, it was three storeys and it was the middle floor and they had the ceiling had partially collapsed due to a leak. They came and pulled the ceiling down in October. Um, 2020 and they didn't put it up until January the following year and they didn't fix any of the other issues at that point either and I had just had enough and turned to social media put all the images and videos up on there and it went viral and disgraced the landlord into not just completing the works in my home but spending millions and having to complete over 800 repairs on my estate to other people's homes too because it was falling to bits. I'm really sorry about your dad. No, thank you. Know, it's you. really, you know, but it does feel like, you know, you used his death to make huge change for lots of people. I'd be very I hope grateful. So. Thank you. Um, just finally, you know, be brutal. Yeah. I am very aware of our responsibility. Uh, yeah. And do you feel that sometimes there's too much focus on mm. people who pay a high rate of tax, people who own their own homes, mm. and not enough on rented housing or social housing? Absolutely. I think this issue with poor social housing, social housing, social housing crisis anyway, has existed. Um, for many decades, before I was even born, people have been suffering. I think more needs to, more focus needs to be put on that. That's where the real issues are. That's where people's lives are being put at risk. And I sometimes think if um, before 2017, it was seen as a focus and it was like all over the news and MPs were talking about it, could we have potentially avoided the tragedy that was Grenfell had we have spoken about this earlier? Thank you so much for being on the programme. It's been really interesting to talk uh, and you. to see some of the footage as well. Really quite sobering. Thank, Thank you, you for much. having me. Thank you.